Okay, hi there and welcome to a short video on behavioural economics. Uh, it's really interesting to see how many times bounded rationality and bounded self-control are appearing in answers to questions. So I thought I'd just spend a couple of minutes exploring the difference between bounded rationality and bounded self-control. Behavioural economics, of course, looks for examples of people making decisions in ways which uh, deviate from those predicted by the rational choice model economics. So bounded rationality, bounded self-control are key concepts to have under control, if you like, before the exam. If you wanted to uh, give me a, a definition of behavioural economics in one sentence, I would say it's systematic and persistent deviations from rational choice, an important feature of the real world. So what is bounded rationality? Bounded rationality is the idea that the decision-making capacity of people cannot be fully rational because they face certain limitations. So, for example, they may suffer from an information gap, an information failure. There simply might not be enough information available to make a fully informed choice, or that information could be unreliable in some shape or form. Secondly, we may be time-limited. There may be a limited amount of time we have to make a decision. Indeed, sometimes people are pressurised into making decisions uh, because time is scarce. Thirdly, we have a limited cognitive ability. Now, the, the limits of the human brain to process and calibrate and calculate every single piece of information is clearly limited. We can't consider every possibility, particularly in a world of, of enormous choice. So, in a world of bounded rationality, the result is we often make what's called satisficing decisions rather than maximising, optimising decisions. Uh, we end up using heuristics, rules of thumb. We make, uh, we make basic rules of, rules of thumb when making decisions. And often, of course, we rely on automated routine, default choices. Now, behavioural economists generally point out, key point here, that bounded rationality is not the same as irrationality. Because decision makers are still trying to make as, as rational a decision as is possible, given the circumstances, given the constraints. How about an example? Here's a good example. Here's the London tube map as a, as a case study in bounded rationality. Now the tube network more or less, week to week, month to month, stays the same for long periods of time. Occasionally, of course, with things like Crossrail and Docklands, we get new, new additions to the tube network. But if you're a commuter using the tube map, you have loads of opportunities to learn about it. And of course, you're using the tube map every day. So in theory, in a rational choice model, almost every regular commuter would use the quickest possible route to and from work, for example. Uh, if somebody's moved jobs or homes, there might be a short period of adjustment. But basically, everybody could be assumed to have learned the best way to travel, in theory. But actually, behavioural economists have found that a big percentage of London commuters just don't find the optimal routes. They're happy with a route they've chosen which has worked in the past. For example, according to this map, I'm told that there are over 10 ways to travel between Waterloo and King's Cross. But what people do is they find uh, a plan A or plan B which works for them. It may not necessarily be the best choice, but it works, you know, five days out of six, what have you. This is a good example of bounded rationality. People make choices that aren't fully optimal, but do the job. What is bounded self-control? Well, bounded self-control is when people have good intentions, the best of intentions, but they don't always carry them out. It helps to explain, for example, why people carry on consuming in a restaurant or in a pub or in a gambling, in a casino or a betting shop, even though it makes sense to stop. Bounded self-control is linked to the concept of hyperbolic discounting. This is where we value the present much more than the future. In other words, we place more weight on the present, on the, on the now, and the very immediate future, rather than you know, a long-term perspective, which standard economic theory might assume. There's oftentimes a desire for instant, immediate gratification. Think about uh, cashing out on a betting app, for example. There's a reluctance to hold back for longer term rewards. A good example would be, for example, uh, gym membership. 
So self-control is a, is, a, is a cognitive process that restrains certain behaviours and emotions. So it allows us to control um, our resistance to temptations and impulses. So many people have good intentions of hitting the gym at the start of the, of the year or when they reach a, a key age landmark in their lives. But often good intentions are overcome by other frictions in our lives. So we don't make use of that expensive monthly gym membership. Interestingly, one aspect of this is that we've seen a big growth in the number of pay-as-you-go gyms. They don't have an expensive monthly membership. They don't commit you to a long-term contract. They allow you to literally pay per visit. And they certainly appeal to consumers who have bounded self-control. So good commercial use of this behavioural concept. There we go. Hopefully that um, explains the difference between bounded rationality and bounded self-control. I'd really want you to use those concepts if you get a question on behavioural economics. Thank you.